and welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for some Selesnya Knights in Best of Three. You may remember this deck from Monday. We played it over in our Best of One stream, Best of One Day Mondays. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you want to see us playing it in Best of One, you can click on the uh, playlist and there's a Best of One playlist. You can find it there or just go to the video tab and scroll down to last Monday. Um, and it did it did really well you know like we went six and one in best of one with this deck and it was a lot of fun to play i i'm a sucker for selesnia decks These, this is my favorite guild it's not the best guild though and you haven't you know we haven't been playing a whole lot of selesnia decks on the stream but this one was fun to play in best of one we're gonna go ahead and try it in best of three today i think it's a better best of one deck you see more um more creature decks in uh, best of one, more like small creature aggro and things like that, that this can just go a little bit bigger than. Uh, we see more control in best of three and um, and more Oko in best of three. And this is, this is not a great deck against Oko, um, admittedly. Uh, we don't have Planeswalker removal in the main, and we have a whole lot of good targets for, that, for them to elk, including Conclave Cavalier. Um, and also our, our sideboard's honestly not that great. You know, like, um, it's not, it's not as powerful as other people's sideboard. So it's not the best. So I'm not uh, expecting it at least, I guess we haven't played it yet, but I'm not expecting it to be the best deck in best of three. Um, but hopefully, you know, we pick up some wins and I think it could be fun to play and, and we're going to give it a shot and, um, I think we could do some, we can do some cool stuff here. So yeah, we have a, we basically have like two kind of themes mixed together in this deck we have the knight theme which is what I, I named it after the knight theme with worthy knight acclaimed contender uh, both being knight matters cards um also have uh knight of autumn and conclave cavalier for a couple other knights acclaimed contender though besides revealing a knight it can also reveal an aura equipment or the next one is the key one a legendary artifact card so we have a couple legendary artifact cards circle of loyalty and the great henge uh, the former, which that also cares about knights. You know, if we have some knights in play, this thing can cost less mana. We can pay for and tap it, make some knights. But then also, whenever you cast a legendary spell, you create a 2-2 knight creature token. So we need legendary spells. And so that's the other part of our deck is besides the knight part, we have the legendary part. But with Circle of Loyalty, the Great Henge, Tulsimer, Tristani, Questing Beast, these are all legendary cards. You can tell by that border. Um, so then to trigger a circle of loyalty. So we're kind of combining a, a knight, uh, a knight theme and a legend theme. And so we have some legendary knights here. Okay, let's have some fun. Good call. Let's do it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just, we're just going to play a league like we have been doing. We're going to play until we either win five or lose two, whichever happens first. Hopefully the win five and not the lose two. So far, we played two leagues. We went three and two and five and zero, oh. and we'll see. I'd be happy with a three and two. That would be really good. I'd be happy with that. But here we go. All right, pretty good hand. So the Acclaim Contender does need another Knight in play for you to trigger this. So, you know, if, when it enters the battlefield, if you control another Knight, then you do this stuff. You know, it, it is an if-then statement then. So we, we kind of need to play like our Knight of Autumn first. Uh, so hopefully my opponent has an Artifact or Enchantment for us to blow up. There are a lot of Artifacts and Enchantments in this format. Remember, we were really um, impressed with Knight of Autumn whenever we played this before. You know, stuff like... Wilderness Reclamation, Fires of Invention, Prison Realm, um, but then even Witch's Oven and uh, Trail of Crumbs. All right, so the opponent thinks that they can just defeat us with only playing five cards instead of seven. That's a bold claim. <laughs> Cynic Flash any day? Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens with the uh, the next BNR announcement on Monday. Because I kind of feel like 
there's a chance there's a there's a kind of a decent chance that Vela Summer gets banned since Vela Summer was just banned in Pioneer. And if that's the case, if Vela Summer does get banned, that will make flash decks a lot better. Do you think God Eternal Ronis would be good in the Selesnia token or adventure version? Kind of the problem with God Eternal Ronis for those decks is you you play a ton of one ones and you know it just gives your creatures plus one. You know, like just just doubling the power if it's if it's just all a bunch of one ones, it's not as good. Um, but that being said, that's that's still. I could see it doing some some work there. Oh, I don't have two white. All right, so I'm I'm thinking they were gonna ritual of set here, right? And so like if I grab circle of loyalty, it'd be like a long time for us to do, to deal with circle of loyalty. Then I was thinking the Conclave Cavalier would be like pretty annoying for them to deal with. Of like, they have to kill this four four because the four four is beating them down, and then we get two two twos. I thought it'd be maybe a little bit harder to deal with because Grixis colors usually play some artifact removal like Angress Rampage, Bedevil, things like that. So like the artifact with Circle of Loyalty isn't as valuable against uh, Grixis. There's no way to deal with flying creatures in this deck. Eh, you just attack them. I mean, there's there's a Tulsimer. Tulsimer deals with with creatures. But yeah, you just you just go wide and and uh, you know Great Henge gains you life and you just race. Yeah, that's how you deal with flying creatures. You kill the opponent. Problem solved. I'll keep this in hand because they have more discard effects. All right, we'll play that one because that's a that's a white source, and that's. We don't really need to keep two lands in hand. Yeah. Yeah, it's been an awesome day today. A lot of people here. Ugh. Oh my gosh. We just. Oh my gosh. Look at that mill. Those are four really good cards. Your defiance is infuriate. Let your weak minds crumble. That edge of the God Eternal as well. That's that's a great one. I know who I am, and no one. Let's make some more room to fight it. All right, looks like they got us. GGS. My opponent was right. All they needed was five cards to beat me there. Some well-timed thought erasures. And a whole bunch of well-timed sweepers. And then, of course, the end to the God Eternals also. GG's. Hmm. 
So they, they were playing Fires of Invention for Night of Autumn. The opponent's playing Grixis Fires. I think the most subs I've ever had in one day was like, uh, like a hundred and twenty-five, hundred and thirty. Um, it was like a New Year's Day, a couple years ago. Ooh, no, I, I was thinking of probably doing the 12 hour stream. I mean, it depends on, on when we hit it, but probably going to do the 12 hour stream with, and it also kind of depends. It depends on like what the announcement is on Monday, honestly, Kendis. Uh, but, but the 21st is supposed to be the update where they add in like the brand new historic cards. Um, and, uh, and then also should be having the um, the BNR changes and all that kind of stuff. So I was thinking like like right after that for the twelve hour stream because the the um, yeah because the sub battle stream this month is on the what the thirtieth. So that that'd be waiting a ways until the twelve hour stream. All right, well, hopefully my opponent has a whole bunch more Thought Erasures in hand. My deck doesn't have that many lands. There's only 24 in here. So I wasn't really expecting to draw two more lands again after keeping five, but that happens. The, yeah, the new historic cards will just be available for wild cards. Um, you know, like an un, you know regular one one for one. You know, uncommons or un, one uncommon wild card. I think that's the only way to obtain them is just wild cards. I don't think you can buy. There's not going to be historic packs to buy or anything because it's just an extra twenty cards. But of course, if you want for a playset of all of them, that's eighty wild cards. I don't know if they said like what rarity they're going to be. You know, if they're going to be different rarities, if there's some, some will be common, uncommon, rare, or anything like the the pictures they showed it showed like the old versions of the cards. And so I, I honestly don't really know there. Oh, or you, you could buy a play set of all the new cards for like 3,200 gems. Okay, they'll have them in a bundle there. That would make sense. Yeah. So about about eighteen dollars worth of gems. Okay, there one of them's one of the twenty is mythic, two or three are rares, and the rest are common and uncommon. Okay, well then it's So I would be guessing it'd be like three rare, like one mythic, three rare, all the rest common and uncommon. Well it's not too difficult to put together the commons and uncommons and So, cool. So 
So yeah, that'll be fun. I'm glad they're going to actually have historic events and you know ranked historic and all that kind of stuff and ready to start brewing in a new format. So that's coming on Monday. Yeah, decklist for just guy. Easiest place is there on the stream decker page. Oh, right. I probably should have attacked first. I just got too excited. My mind needs a rest. Should have attacked first. I was, you know, we just drew the Great Henge, and I was so excited. I will remake the multiverse in my image. I will remake the multiverse in Tony Danza's image. You have no weakness I cannot exploit. Hmm. It's a weird block. I will return I just, one day. That block didn't do anything. All right, but we should have this one. The whole of the multiverse will bend to my will. Alright. Yeah, yep, I juked him with that initial uh, go into the face attack and then rearranging. Tristani did look pretty good there. Let's try this again. All right, game number three. We do even get Veil of Summer. So maybe this time we'll have like a good Veil of Summer game. I 
But yeah, I, I like this deck. You know, just playing green, green, white creatures, and then the Great Henge and Circle of Loyalty, both pretty cool. This is a fun one. That Conclave Cavalier, pretty underrated. As long as it doesn't get elked, it's a difficult card to deal with. Got to kill like the four mana four four, and then you got a couple of two twos you got to worry about. If, if it was up to me, what would I do with the Bandit announcement? I think... Um, I think what I would what I would probably do... Um, I was talking with, with a friend about this today. And we were talking about it. And I, th I think what makes sense would be maybe just ban Oko, of course, and Veil of Summer... Like those two cards. I think that would... Uh, um, I think that would... Like, you know, banning Oko would really help aggro. And banning Veil of Summer would really help... You know, decks that are trying to interact. Um, so that would really help instant speed decks. Like, with no Veil of Summer, like... All these like blue decks, like with a whole lot of counter spells, would would be a lot better. But then again, the decks that beat that are aggro, and without Oko holding back the aggro, he said banning veil makes flash way too strong. But I mean, I mean, it just help aggro come back, like with more with more flash in the the format. The more aggro we'll see. And it should just be a good... Um, should hopefully just kind of be a good, uh, you know, rock, paper, scissors of aggro and then, you know, like flash and, and you know, like mid-range decks trying to beat aggro and, and so on. I'm playing an elemental deck tomorrow, actually, Chris. Yeah, I'm playing an el elemental deck tomorrow. But yeah, yeah, there's still there's still Teferi and, and Teferi decks definitely get better without Veil of Summer, because you know, Teferi decks um are ones that have never liked playing against Veil of Summer. I guess my opponent disconnected. I don't know. Do they just not have a land drop? So even though they could Ritual of Soot, we'll still keep the, the Conclave Cavalier. So I like play, getting that thing out here. It'll still be pressuring. Even with a Ritual of Soot. Yeah, with Jessica Midrange, we played... Um, we played against Blue Eye Control. We played against... Um, at least one, maybe two Oko decks. I don't I know we played against... An Oko deck second. I don't, I don't remember what we played against first. We played against like Oko and then Blue Light Control and then um, 
and then some aggro deck that didn't do that well. Like a, a black red aggro. Like a, a Rishik, yeah, sac black red sacrifice aggro. Um, and then the last match was against something. Wasn't Oko, but played against Oko once, at least once, maybe twice. Somebody in chat may remember the, the matchups better than I do. It's one thing I'm not very good at is remembering the exact matchups because, you know, when you play all the games, you know, it's just kind of kind of hard to remember exactly which ones are which. I don't think Goose or Wicked Wolf would, would be nearly as good as they are now without Oko. I think they're completely reasonable cards without Oko. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think Goose or Wicked Wolf... Like, if Oko is banned, those cards don't need to be banned at all. If they don't want to ban Oko and ban, you know, Goose instead, I guess that's an option. Um, I, I don't think Goose needs to be banned. Yeah, yeah, Wicked Wolf is a good card, but it doesn't... There's a lot of good cards in Standard. Just because it's a good card doesn't mean it would need to be banned. All right, want to know. Yeah, I don't Yeah, I, I'm not in love with Once Upon a Time. Yeah, I, I don't love that card, but um I think that I don't think it necessarily needs to be banned though. Um even it even how popular it is. I, I mean, I think I think you can kind of see, like, if you change other things, it just kind of see what happens around the metagame afterwards. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so it, it's so incredibly efficient at what it does. But I, th I feel like control decks can kind of outlast once upon a time a decent amount. Uh, I guess I need to take the Knight of Autumn just to have something on turn three. Oh, but I have this Blossoming Sands here. Oh, that Blossoming Sands is gross. Basically, if my opponent plays like an Oko here, it could be kind of rough. Invert the world to watch kings grovel and worms rule. I think a little oh, that's really rough. The deck that we're playing is not not a good deck against Oko. We've talked about that before. This is just you know even even though that was turn three on the play instead of turn two, it's just. Mm. This is not going to end well for me. Your new look is enchanting. This isn't a game we're going to be winning. We're not going to be able to handle, you know, the next seven Oko activations that they'll be able to have. Uh, 
going to move on, not really show them more <clears throat> of my deck. The the only, like, good answer, I guess, you know, good is relative to Oko is Prison Realm. That's about all I got. And then, yeah, we'll play Cavalier of Dawns instead of Tristani's because Cavalier of Dawn can destroy Planeswalkers also. Get an extra Tulsimer in here. Hmm. These once upon a times are worse with me bringing in a whole bunch of spells. Yeah, Casket just hits, you know, Goose, Mayhem Devil, um, Cauldron Familiar, Paradise Druid, basically everything. So again, we need a knight and play for a claimed contender to trigger. We also don't have any knights around, so we'll just play this right now. Who's more foolish? The fool. The fool who rules one bite, and all your cares are gone. Because that would have been nice if we would have drawn the fourth mm, land. I could have just played Questing it. Beast and. Uh, been able to take out the Oko without having to use a prison realm. I'll shear the wool from your eyes. No, that's not the case anymore. <laughs> now this this would have been nice to have the prison realm for this one. So it's a game you're interested in. I think a little merriment is in order. again or not we've actually taken out two okos it's about as good as we could possibly do
All right, Cavalier's doing pretty good. Just kind of trading with stuff, making a bunch of two twos. No. Uh, that's unfortunate. The end of the Legion. So I want to do this first because if they have, if they had instant speed removal there, I don't want to like first, okay, because I don't want to just like first attack and they, they block and everything and then I try to fight afterwards and then they kill my creature. I guess they didn't really even have to block there though. All right, trying out Nia Legends. Nice. Krenko plus Black Blade Reforge. That is a lot of fun. Yeah, those two work very well together. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited, CW, that they're going to start having the... Um, you know, the actual, like, historic events and ranked historic and stuff. So, yeah, we're going to start playing historic. So on the 21st, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll probably be playing some of these Veil of Summers. You know, we saw a couple Noxious Grass, a couple Legion's Ends. Probably be playing some Veil of Summers. I don't remember from the announcement if it'll have best of one ranked or not. I, I don't remember, honestly. I don't recall. Casting the, the once upon a time there on turn two, because if we could hit Worthy Knight and be able to have a two drop. Looks like they kept a two lander. And the Knight of Autumns. Playing 4x Knight of Autumn. Getting it done. Yeah, so I was going to blow up the other trail of crumbs. 
And I want them to be able to start activating trailer crumbs and, you know, dig for more land drops and everything. So DO4 says no best of one ranked for historic, just best of one play queue. We have now best of three ranked plus events coming later. So it seems. So why do they have two online games like Magic Online and Arena? It's silly for them not to move everything over to Arena and focus on it. I think it's just kind of too difficult. With there's tens of thousands of cards that are on Magic Online. I mean, hundred. Gosh, it's probably more than a hundred thousand. Um, and it's just kind of too. I guess it's just too much. Too much to import to arena and you know have all like have all the cards work together and and there's just a lot of different rules um from you know like from how cards were designed back in the day and just kind of getting putting it all together and having like all the cards work with each other and not having bugs and everything like that is i guess it's just kind of too much yeah even though i've I've been playing, like, I first started playing, you know, casually whenever I was a kid, but I basically started playing serious and playing a lot whenever uh, in World Awake. And so, with that question, when people ask how long have I been playing Magic, I just answer World Awake. So, this is this is kind of tough. Conclave Ta Cavalier and Acclaim Contender are both pretty good uh, cards. I'm going to take the... The Cavalier, but against Black, White, Orzhov, Enforcer, those are both pretty good choices. Oh, it's 18,000 cards? Oh, that's it? I kind of felt like it would be more than that. I have never played a Happily Ever After deck, no. Whoa, all that glitters. Hmm, maybe this Knight of Autumn is going to be great. We'll still play the Cavalier this turn. So I have some more information with the Knight of Autumn next turn. I'll have the five mana and be able to double spell with Paradise Druid at Knight of Autumn. Of course, we could also just go Great Henge, Paradise Druid. Well, we're not doing that anymore. Night of Autumn has just been MVPs. Revenge of Ravens. Take three, but I'm going to be gaining two with this thing. <laughs> Selesnia, Knights of Autumn. Dang, that's a 5 5 flyer. Five five flyers hit pretty hard. Very vigilant. 5-5 five, five flyer as well. Yeah, I guess a 6-6 a six, six questy beast 
also hits pretty hard. Ooh, Hushbringer. That stops my great that stops my the Great Henge. Hmm. Okay, so if they go block, I guess the only thing they can block questing beasts is the Sarah's Guardian, but if they don't block that, they'd go block, take six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So they have to block questing beasts, so the Sarah Guardian has to block. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can they stay alive at one if they go block here, block there? That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15. Oh, but they're gonna gain all this life from this Revenge of the Ravens. Dude, this card's just gonna kill me. I guess my best play is actually just attacking with Questing Beast. Wait, you guys have lifelink? Okay, maybe I could have served in with you. I forgot about y'all having lifelink over here. Yeah, they gain a lot. Yeah, they. We, I lose a life and they gain a life for each attacker. So if I just attack out for eight, I would lose eight. They would gain eight. So I can attack with four things. I mean, I guess I shouldn't even attack with these because then they don't have to block Questing Beast. If I just attack here, they have to block Questing Beast. That was a clutch plus one plus one because that life the life gain from the Hushbringer. I, I didn't really count the life gain from the Hushbringer. Yeah, that was a clutch circle of loyalty here. Oh gosh, I didn't even see the opponent's deck. All right, who wants, guess how many cards my opponent has. Feel free to guess. I'm at 42. All right, we'll see, we'll see how many they got. I'll let them draw their card. Yeah, 235. Plus 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 7, or yeah, so 16. Wait, so, so it's 235, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 plus 5, 15. So yeah, so exactly, so 250. Yeah, so they got 250. Yeah, the full 250. 250. Yeah, I counted the token at first. I was. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is a real this is a real close game and everything. They were like if I didn't if I didn't draw this circle of loyalty, my opponent probably probably won that game actually. Like a circle of loyalty honestly saved me. Yeah, so that's that's the maximum amount of cards you can have in a deck on Arena.
But the good thing is, like, like yeah, trying to sideboard against a 250 card deck, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm not, like, I can't sideboard against a 250 card deck. They could have anything. Like. Uh, how many, I, MTGO, I, I think you can have a whole lot more than 250. I don't know the exact number that you can have. I think it may be, like, like 1,256 or so, something, like, really big like that. I could I could obviously be wrong with that. I'm not I'm not sure. That's just kind of like the number that came to my head. But I, I Don't quote me on that. Someone can probably look that up. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see if our opponent plays Battle of Wits. That'd be pretty cool. They have it in their black white their black white deck. They just play a, a Five mana blue enchantment and win the game. All right, we're going wide. I'm not sure if they're going to have Kaya's Wrath. Even if they have four Kaya's Wraths, it's still just a, you know, it's a small chance out of 250 that they even draw it. So I'm just going wide. Battle of Wits is an enchantment. It's a five-man enchantment that says, um, at the beginning of your upkeep, so you do have to untap with it, if, if your library has 200 or more cards in it, you win the game. Four, four, first strike? I can't get through that. I'm going as yeah, I'm going as wide as their deck is tall. Oh, that thing puts a counter on something. Can only cast one spell a turn, huh? That's unfortunate. I could have acclaimed contender plus circle of loyalty if I could do more than one spell. Still going wide. Oh, it's non creature? Whoopsie. I guess I could have read the card. Uh oh. Uh oh. The Guardian. The Guardian's here. Attack. The plus one plus one counter came from the idyllic garage. See that there's, there's like a garage on the planes there. Idyllic garage. You go to the garage, you get a one 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 counter. Yeah, 250 is the limit for Arena. I don't know what the uh, the limit is for Magic Online. Uh, 
I'm pretty sure that was garage. I don't know why they have a garage out in the middle of a field, but I don't know. I guess if, if you feel like going to that garage out in the middle of the field, you get a plus one, plus one counter. For your troubles. Well, this is a pretty silly game for us. <laughs> Garage for horses. Ooh, are they gonna fog? No fog. Hey, okay. All right, we're three and zero oh with Selesnya Knights. Three and O. Oh. All right, we're an hour in. I'm going to go ahead and reset. I am certainly looking forward to the update on the 21st that's supposed to help with memory leak issues. <laughs> Why are they queuing with a 250 card Orzhov deck? I don't know. Sometimes you got to do something different. You know, sometimes you got to just have some fun. <laughs> Ready for settle? That would have been a good settle wreckage. All right, three now. Okay, you've been sneezing a bunch the last couple days. Why are you sneezing so much? Yeah, I don't know. He's last couple days been sneezing a bunch. All right, pretty nice looking hand. We'll, I think we'll probably be going Worthy Knight Acclaimed Contender. Probably here. The the 2D stand for donation deck. That means it's, it's a deck that um, a viewer submitted. Again, yet another opponent that's playing once upon a time incorrectly. Again, just untap. Take your draw step. So we know we have another acclaimed contender. So really, I need land right now. You know, maybe we draw draw like a land there and maybe we can take a spell. I haven't played Team or Walkers in a while. Really had the Team or Walkers deck designed to to beat Field of the Dead. And so since Field of the Dead was banned, I haven't really picked it up too much, honestly. That's really where I, I built the deck for. Streamer Cat. You doing okay, Hawkeye? Okay? You doing okay, bud? There you go. 
I don't think, I don't know if I, like, basically, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to trade Worthy Knight for Paradise Druid with attacking with it. It's like, probably not. Rude. Six mana and they just pass. Got Brazen Borrower. They got Counter Magic. Ether Gust. All right. Got a win, okay. So, presuming with them playing Wicked Wolf, that they're going to be an Oko deck, and we're going to want these Prison Realms for Oko. Seems like a fair assumption. Got a pretty poor hand there. I'm going to play Cavalier instead of Tulsimer. I think I put it in instead of Tristani last time, but I, I think I want it instead of Tulsimer. Yeah, Simic Flash viable on a budget at a GP? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the kind of deck that... That's... Um, you know, like... You, May not win the GP, but I mean, it's really hard to win the GP with anything, to be honest. But, um, but yeah, you can pick up some wins and and uh, do well. I feel like we're supposed to be trying to go wide. So I think I maybe want to keep all these circle of loyalties and stuff. I don't know what I want. What I want to cut. I mean, the Knight of Autumns don't do that much, but they, they do help Acclaimed Contender be a lot better and Worthy Knight also. I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll get rid of two of them, though. And drop one circle. You're playing at this in best of one right now. You're 5-1 in best of one. There you go. Good job, Unrelenting. Yeah, I, I do like this deck more in best of one than best of three. But, yeah, we're... We're so far so good in best of three also. Yeah, you can day two with some McFlash. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm supposed to take Questing Beast there instead. That's a tough call. Questing Beast or Tristani. We have like these are pretty similar to Questing Beast already on the, the same kind of spot. Oh no. Tulsmer is just it's yeah, Tulsmer is just removal. 
you know, basically removal, life gain, also a legendary creature for um, triggering Circle of Loyalty. Hmm. Didn't really consider Deputy of Detention as a card that they could play. Really hope they don't have more Deputy of Detentions, because I I did sideboard out Tulsmer, so I don't have removal. Killer. The brambles of truth twirl and curl, choking out lies. I guess I have prison realms, I guess. <laughs> Surely you see the we need to draw prison here. realm. Oh yeah, yeah, Cavalier is horrible against Oko. That is true. This, this whole deck that we're playing right now is pretty horrible against Oko. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, so I did side out Tol Tulsimer, which obviously I'm going to bring back Your in now. Is enchanting. I didn't know they'd have Deputy of Detention. No, Elking Deputy doesn't do anything. If the Deputy dies, I mean, it just turns it into a 3-3, three, three, which is, you know, better than a 1-3. But if the, if the Deputy dies, I still get my creature back. Gaze into my face and put on your true shape. Oh, good, Matthew. Good. Glad you had a fun day with the family today. Okay. We're still in it. Right, I brought in Cavalier of Dawns. So we did bring in some removal. I mean, I'd love to get these Worthy Knights back, but we gotta kill Oko. It's not fair. Oh, yeah, getting turned into a 3-3, it's not fair. If only you knew. So it looks like time wipe.
Find my find my worthy knight. Yeah, Oko, Deputy Detention, Time Wipe. These are all cards that are, you know, pretty big nightmares for my deck. But we're still hanging in there. We've had a, you know, had a lot of good stuff here. We're still hanging in there, even even through all this. Together, we will prevail. Cause yeah, obviously our deck's all about going wide, so Time Wipe's pretty bad, and obviously same thing, Deputy Detention. Harness the elements. Oh darn it! I I missed, uh, I missed them cracking a food. Oh, but doesn't that still kill them? They just, they just made a block. That they still die. They just took twelve. Ah well, that was not a good block. And that was game two. We won. We're four zero. That was game two of us winning game one. Against that deck? Ah, Hawkeye, okay. <laughs> you're sitting on the keyboard. Sorry. Well. GG's. We got there. I was not expecting to win that game basically ever. Until... They said the game was over and we won the match. And then I was like, whoa, we, we won? But the entire game before that, ever since they went turn one, Guild Goose, before that, I did not think we were winning that at all. All right, we're 4 0. Y'all know what that means. That means it's final boss time. So sorry, Doobie Brothers, we're going to be cutting out. We're going to our final boss playlist. We're going to listen to it a little bit ago. Here we go. So we can keep three lands, then a, a five, a five, a six, and a six. Probably not going to be great. Probably is not going to be great either, but going to five cards is pretty rough, so we'll just give it a try. Hopefully Knight of Autumn's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. My opponent really did not need a time wipe there. They could have definitely waited for time wipe, for sure. I was hoping to find it. <clears throat> I was hoping to find a Paradise Druid. But I so basically I just want the, the fourth land drop over getting another three drop. I'm super glad we grabbed that land, drawing 5-drop, five 5-drop, five back-to-back.
Yeah, this is the the boss fight from Final Fantasy VII. Like, just your regular boss fight music. It wasn't like the final boss fight music or anything like that. Alright. Gotta kill the goose so they can't just keep making food for the wolf. They're down to just two cards in hand. They had a lot of lands, and that's good for me. Hopefully they have another land or two in hand. Alright, that's gotta mean they have a removal spell, right? If they're just attacking. If they want me to double block, then they'll use removal. Do they have like a noxious grasp or something like that? Uh boo. Nope, they had a Hydro Crisis. Wish I would have blocked. Every tale about me is absolute nonsense. Well, I mean, we, we've actually beaten two decks that have been playing Oko so far. I shouldn't be surprised to lose one. One bite, and all your huh. cares are gone. Gosh, I think it's indestructible now. I guess I'm just dead by not blocking. So I'm just going to die to this crisis now. I guess I have to block. Uh, need to play Tulsa. Need to play a new Tulsimer. I don't need to show more cards. We're dead. All right, instead of cutting both, we'll, we'll go one and one. I'm going to play the two Cavalier Dawns, but we're going to go one and one with those. Okay. The best deck in the format, also our worst matchup. We keep playing against it. But we've... So no shame if we pick up a loss here. Uh, Veil because I'm expecting them to have... Like, we saw a Noxious Grasp there. I'm kind of expecting them to have a lot of that kind of effect. Um, or like a decent amount. <laughs> yeah, we need a yeah, final gown towns playing right now. We need a midnight clock. That would be pretty good. All right, well, we're pretty lucky. No. No turn two Oko. Probably means a wicked wolf, but oh well. I mean, I can't really do anything about it. You know, so I don't have to attack with the Paradise Druid and make them fight my Knight of Autumn, but I'd rather them fight the Paradise Druid, honestly, because I want the Knight of Autumn in play for this. Okay. Yeah, Oko decks are more prevalent in traditional standard than in best of one.
No, this is not a replay. I took the Paradise Druid to make it easier to cast this the Great Henge. I don't love that they didn't play anything. Okay. Kind of expecting like an Ether Gust there. Yeah, so I, I could have, yeah, I could have destroyed a food whenever I played the knight, but then my knight's just a 2-1 instead of a 4-3, so that then they would still just be able to, with Wicked Wolf, they'd still be able to kill the knight, not have to sacrifice a food. I don't really know why I'm casting Once Upon a Time right there and not waiting till later, honestly. It's getting late, playing a little loose. The Great Henge, storming off. Storming off. So that was a great turn for us. I, again, don't really like how they just passed. Flooding out now. Flooding out. So, good news is the... Gilded Goose is dead, so they don't get to keep on making food for Wicked Wolf, but Wicked Wolf's already big enough anyway. <laughs> Alright, can we go wide enough? We're trying. So they're at nine? And if they go, if they block these three on the left, they take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They would take twelve, okay. Okay. We made a game three. Made it to a game three.
against the final boss. We have to get pretty lucky here, you know, no turn two Oko. Like basically kinda like the last game, they can't have can't have a real solid hand. Um my favorite deck so far today. Honestly, I like all these decks. Uh, honestly. These yeah, these this was a definitely a good uh, deck day um all these decks are pretty fun Ooh, we drew all right we drew oko removal we now have oko removal in hand that was an objectively great henge that's a good point there that was a very great henge Well, I guess we need to. I guess we need to get rid of Golgari Queen with this. Because otherwise, they'll just destroy the prison realm. Be surprised if we meet again. So they're just sitting on removal. Probably a good amount of like wicked wolves and stuff in hand. Why not attack? Because I don't want them to wicked wolf my paradise druid. So I didn't attack because I want to be able to have five mana and be able to play the Cavalier of Dawn the next turn if need be. Ooh, Incubation Druid. So the Incubation Druid's a 3-5 right now. Can't attack with Knight of Autumn. Oh no, because the Gilded Goose can't add mana. So no, it's not a 3-5. I guess I could have attacked with Knight of Autumn. Whoops. No, I'm not going to be able to play the last deck tonight, so yeah, we're already after 10 o'clock. Had some long matches, so no, I'm not going to not going to get to the last deck for tonight. Rise, my elemental friend. Hopefully this is the last game. Hopefully we don't, you know, that'd be because if it, this is the last game, that means we won. Oh, now they can activate Incubation Druid. Man, I'm so bad against Incubation Druid. I am in need of rest. 
All right, draw some lands. Draw like three lands in a row. Not me draw lands. Them draw lands. I don't have any artifact or enchantment in the graveyard for if the Cavalier of Night dies right now. I can blow up their 3-3 Golem with this Knight of Autumn. Oh no, my Cavalier of Dawn. Sorry, Hawkeye, I'm just moving you because you're in the way. It's hard for me to see. All right, we want to keep on drawing creatures. Acclaimed Contender is our best draw right now. No, this this is not this is not a Witch's Oven deck that we're playing against right now. Claimed contender. I want to draw my card first, especially after drawing two good cards. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Cavalier of Dawn. Man, it's, so, like, the problem is, is a claimed contender is just awesome because it, it, you know, gets another knight plus draws us a card. But this is just too critical if they, you know, if they draw an Oko or something. They draw a Planeswalker. This is just too critical to have. We just need that. All right, so good turn. So I could, um, so yeah, so I could Cavalier Dawn this Gilded Goose to keep them from making more food, which then allows me to draw another card. Feels like that's just not a very good use of Cavalier of Dawn, though. I, I kind of regret not grabbing the Acclaimed Contender, because that would be one to just, just throw out there. Okay, so I was I was gonna be able to activate the, the circle of loyalty, of course. Man, we did it. Yeah, that's all I was gonna do is just make a token, you know, make a, of course, a three three token. It says two two, but creatures get plus one plus one. Wow, we really did it. So why not Cavalier the Wolf? Because they had, because Goose would just make a food and they would make it indestructible. So the the wolf is indestructible. 
Wow, we really did it. We were, we got, you know, honestly, like this deck isn't as good um, in best of three as what we made it seem. Like we got pretty fortunate to beat three Yoko decks. Like we, we were real lucky in, in spots. Opponent, you know, like the, as we saw that last opponent, like they just weren't drawing Oko, for example. Um, but it's a pretty strong deck. And especially in best of one, I really like it. Ooh, let's get, let's get some victory music. Let's do it. Get some fanfare. Why they concede? I don't know. Because we were going pretty wide and they were at a lower life total. Um, but yeah, Selesnia Knights. It's fun to play Selesnia cards. Circle of Loyalty and Great Henge both looked really good, especially the Great Henge. MVP there. Um, honestly, I, I just like Cavalier of Dawn a lot. I kind of feel like Cavalier of Dawn should just be in the main deck. Like, like these four slots should just be two Cavalier of Dawn, one Tristani, one Tulsimer in the main. Honestly, Cavalier Dawn's just awesome. And it's a knight, um, which is just good for these. So I I think that's that's something I want to change moving forward. Um, but then I don't, I don't know, like, I don't know what to do about, like, the, the, the sideboard slots and stuff then. But I don't know. I kind of feel like I want to do that. Um, yeah, Cavalier of Dawn has been my jam recently, too. So yeah, like if this had two Cavalier of Dawns, take out a, a Tristani and a Tulsimer, maybe have a third Cavalier of Dawn over here, and then then you got another sideboard slot for something. I don't know, I don't really know what. Uh, maybe a fourth Vela Summer against um, yeah, maybe just play like four Vela Summers because obviously when that card's good, that card's real good. Tristani was Tristani was just really good for us though throughout the throughout the games. Tristani was really good. Maybe also then maybe actually take out one of these circle of loyalties and just go with two of them um and play that second Tristani still. Yeah, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. I don't think we really need a third one of those. Cool. Yeah, that, that looks good. That looks good. Um, but there we go. Yeah, it's Lesnia Knights. Uh, again, yeah, I don't, I don't think you're favored at all against the Oko decks, but you know we squeaked through some wins. Um, and uh, you know you can, you know you can still get some wins. There's some good stuff going on here. Um, but particularly best of one is where I really like this deck. But it's just fun to play. Knight of Autumn's awesome. Fun deck to play here. I've been really liking playing like these acclaimed contender worthy knight decks recently, also. And Great Henge is just really cool. I think if Oko does get banned, a deck like this does is um you know goes up in in uh in value quite a bit. Like I I think that like these kind of cards, not like go up in value as in like like price wise or anything, but just like how good like these cards are or like how the deck plays is a lot better without Oko. Because obviously Oko you know, turning Questing Beast and Conclave Cavaliers into Elks and Circle of Loyalty and Great Henge, you know, turn the, turning these things, Tristani, even turning all those things into Elks is is just such a problem. And this deck doesn't attack Planeswalkers too well either. But a lot of fun. We'll continue to work on it. And, you know, we'll see what happens with the BNR announcement um, on Monday and see if this is another a deck to kind of watch out for. But, yeah, I'm having fun playing Selesny again. Um, all right, that's Lesnia Knights, though. If you are watching this video on YouTube, you know what to do. Hit that like button over there. Also, leave some comments. Let me know what you think about the deck and everything like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's all I have here for Selesnia Knights. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you for the next video.